if you understand the benefits, right, Mm -hmm. then then schedule starts to make sense when it needs to make sense and fade when it when it has opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. Some of the people I respect the most in homeschooling are those who have enjoyed the fact that if they and the child wish they can just blow right on through lunch if they want to, because this is just going so well. Mm -hmm. And we're having this fascinating conversation and we want to keep reading the story and see how it comes out or whatnot. And there isn't a, probably the most stress oriented moment of my teaching career is when I'm in the middle of one of those moments and the bell goes off. Yes, exactly. Oh, exactly. Cause you'll never pick it back up tomorrow. No. The moment's unfortunately, gone. <laughs> unfortunately you come in tomorrow and you go, now we were talking about it. They all look at you like, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> right. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You keep coming back here every day, but we don't know. You. Right. Um, uh, so, so I, I think I, that, I, oh, go uh, ahead. No, you do uh, so. All right. All right. All right. So I've got it. Uh, the question that we started with, what should a homeschool schedule look like? I I've got, I think I've got a, a pretty good answer. Flexible accountability. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yep. Good. At a practical level, I would say to anyone Contemplating or involved in homeschooling, uh, just like we said in one of our previous episodes, the end is almost everything. Mm-hmm. The way you get there is through a plan, and and I tell I tell teachers that are in the in the traditional classroom, um, and and teachers who are uh, parents trying to educate their children at home, the purpose of a plan is not to become a prison; it's to become the ability to flex. Uh-huh. Right. If I, if I've laid out a year's vision, we're going to read these books, um, et cetera. I'm not going to get all into the curricular side of it, but if sure. I I've, if I've mapped something out, and um, you know, it's, I guess it's sort of like the GPS world that we live in nowadays. <laughs> I, I'm here, and I want to get there, and the little GPS dude gives me three options. Mm -hmm. to get there and tells me the time differences and the mileage differences. And I choose one and I get going. And at some point I make a wrong turn Mm -hmm. or I see something cool. uh, I see a sign that says world's largest ball of twine. (laughs) And and, and I, and I veer off to go see that. Understandably so. (laughs) It means I'm somewhere near my mother's hometown because that has the world's largest ball of twine. (laughs) Cocker City, Kansas, my <laughs> friend. Uh, population 200, and they are proud of that ball of twine. Well, if, in fact, they started back up here a while back to make it bigger because somebody in Iowa somewhere was, was getting a pretty big ball of twine. Wow. And they were like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you can't have our one. Thing. Well, anyway, if, if I go off to see Cocker City and then want to get back to where I was headed – What's GPS do? It it recalculates. Right. But because it knew at the beginning where I was trying to get, and it now knows where I've gone, it, it's just this constant, quote unquote, recalculating. Right. And, and a plan allows for that. Mm-hmm. If you just jump in and we'll, we'll just see where this sucker goes. <laughs> yes, you will. Yeah. <laughs> and you might be quite happy with a lot of the sites that you see. Mm-hmm. But the end result is probably going to be less – or you're going to wind up somewhere you probably hadn't intended to be. Right. And, and, and so uh, the schedule is just, as you said, uh, a, a flexible accountability. Mm-hmm. 